Need some fast, cheap, reliable muck coins? Go to MMOXP.com and use discount code MONEYSHOT for 5% off your order. Link in the description below. <laughs> Welcome back, YouTubers and Madden fans. This is Mad Money Shot, sniffing out the Madden cheese as always. Got another full breakdown video for you today. I'm doing the Seahawks. I put to you guys in Thursday's video, what book did you guys want to see? And you guys requested the Seahawks. I've been getting requests for the Seahawks quite a bit, so hopefully this fills the need for people out there that need it. Uh, if you guys want to see, I was actually going to put out the Saints. If you guys want to see that next month, because I put out one of these a month, uh, let me know in the comments section with the like button. Um, you can always pick whatever book you want up on MadmoneyShot.com or links in the description below as well. Uh, that's really up to you. This book, however, is a really good book. It's one of my largest books. It's about an hour and a half of uh, content. Uh, it's a really good running playbook, really good uh, passing playbook as well. So I'm glad you guys uh, picked this one because I also want to make sure I bring you guys a really high quality book. So to me, th this is exactly that. So other than that, let's go and let's get right into the video. Next up, I got the halfback counter. So this play, I mean, you typically have a pretty, a pretty large gap because of the two wide receiver look. And then you can see how I can get a, a big run right up the middle of that. So I'm only gonna, all I'm going to do is read that defensive end. If he hesitates like that, I'm going outside of him. Um, if he if he crashes in, I'm typically going to go inside. Simple principles of, of, uh, of running this type of play. So there he hesitates. Got to get my blocks to set up. And you can see how there's a, it's very capable of, of being a very big run. So here we go. Here he crashes. I got to get up inside of that blocker. Yeah, I might not get. Uh, I might not necessarily get a huge play every time, but you can see there's definitely. You know, there he crashes again. Got to get inside. You know, what I mean, it's just there's definitely a consistency to this play. A big run consistency to uh, to counter plays in general. So here, there's nobody over there at all. Um, it looks like it was a backside blitz. So you know, blitzing can give this play trouble because obviously it takes a little bit of time to develop. But ultimately, it's going to be um, a really consistent, good run. Next up, out of the strong eye H slot, we have the stretch alert bubble. These are the best type of RPOs to run. Typically, the formation gives away whether it's man or zone, and that'll essentially give away the weakness of the play. So there was a man. There was no cornerback outside. Here, once again, we got a man, so there's no cornerback outside. I'm just going to take it wide. You'll get the biggest runs doing it this way. Um, you know, typically, if the cornerback is there but he's in far enough because of the formation that you can get outside you can try to run it but the man coverage is going to definitely be the best way to run it here we go once again we get another man coverage um, like i said anytime the formation gives away the defense it shows an obvious advantage so here we have a zone which you know can give an advantage to the screen side but not necessarily you really have to watch this defender and if he plays the run like he did there where he shot inside you typically have the advantage that you want to make the screen play if the, if the defender in front of B drops back, like he does right there, he's going to shoot down on it. So you can't run it You can't run it against that type of look. He has to shoot in towards the run to make this play successful. So like I said, right there, he shot down on it. So I, mean, I'm, I can't make that throw. He could, he could go for as much as a pick if I make that play. So I'm really waiting for that defender to shoot inside. Mm. So I really have to watch that defender. Does he shoot in for the run? Like right there. Now he's out of position. I can make a play. Um, he kind of came back towards the ball because I threw it a little bit quick. But he, he didn't get as much as he could have. But ultimately, I have to watch that defender. So like I said, right here. He doesn't He doesn't shoot in for the run. I, I, I would have got, you know, the ball probably would have got knocked away anyway. So watch that defender. Here he shoots in for the run. That's the only time where I can throw that screen. I have to get that look where he shoots in for the run play to make that play. Or else I have to hand it off. So here we go one more time. Like I said, there, shoots him for the run. Actually, it was a blitz. <laughs> so here we go. Got a man coverage. I'm going to take it outside or try. The blocking fullback, for some reason, completely took himself out of the play, but I still get close to 10 yards, so it's still a good play. Next up, battle the strong H wing, we have the PA boot X shot. This particular play is really good against cover one, uh, cover one defenses. Now all you're going to do really is you're going to put this X route on a smart route and you're going to see how quickly he gets up the sideline uh, to really beat the hell out of that defense. It actually works so good that it can actually work against cover two man as well um, because a lot of times it will beat that before it even gets there. But uh, that's typically in other formations. I can't say it does that this well in this formation. Um, but you know like I said it's just it's, it's pretty much just a home run every time. 
Your underneath routes are pretty good as well. Obviously not as good against man coverage. These are more the zone, the zone coverage plays. If you guess wrong and you accidentally get a zone, uh, some of these other routes like the B um, are going to be really, you know, they're going to they're going to bail you. So you typically want to try to run this against man coverages, but if you don't get them, like I said, the B route's probably going to be the best thing uh, on the uh, on the field for you. And you can also drag the other tight end under the B route if you prefer. I'd say that the fullback isn't really doing too much, so I would say put that fullback on a pass block, put A on the drag. And now you have, um, you know, something that'll pull down the coverages, and it's just going to be a really good route. That was a real tight window right there. Still worked out, though, but you, have, you really have two good options in the events. I mean, the A route will work in, in, a, in a man coverage as well. But um, you have some really good options if you, no matter what the, what the coverages you picked. Although I think the fullback was doing a better job of pulling down that, that drag. Next up, we got the post shot. So all you have to do is mo motion this guy in right here. And he's pretty much just going to be open, like right. You know, he'll get it. He'll get open inside quite a bit. But I'm really trying to have, trying to work this A route. This A and this B route are going to be two of the more consistent routes. But in a lot of scenarios, more will get open right away, based off of you know just just his inside leverage. And he'll also pull coverage. These three routes really work against each other to pull coverage for each individual player. If it's a man coverage, the only thing that you really have is the B route. But A is really the play. <coughs> Forgot the motion in that time. I want to hit him one time up the seam. It's going to be best against cover three. Um, and like I said, I get a man. Like I said, the only route I have against man is B, is the B route. And you're not going to get much. Catch him, especially if you can diagnose it late like I did. Next up, we got the stretch alert X looky. You know, it's a decent, a good, a good stretch play. Obviously, um, you know that's the basis of the play. But you also can throw back if you just hold X after the snap. Um, you know, this is how these new plays are run. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, there I actually hesitated. I was, I was really staring at that receiver. Yeah, you really got to diagnose a pre-snap what you're going to do with the ball. But the run play is really solid, and obviously. Um, you know, you have an added dimension if you if you decide to take the pass, but it's a really good run play. Ready, like I said, sometimes that run play you gotta take it inside. I mean, sometimes that's where it's at. It's not always to the edge. Ready. I'd like to hit that receiver or hit that receiver one time, but I'm just getting such good blocking <laughs> going up the field. It's just like I don't really feel the need. I mean, the run play is so good. Ready. I don't really feel the need to have to, to go. You know what I'm saying? Like. This just feels like a a, a, a a nasty stretch play, <laughs> but like I said, the receivers there are just you know obviously it's an extremely secondary option the way this blocking is going down. So once again, I mean we're this is just a, this this run play is pretty guaranteed, but like I said, hold X. I want to get a scenario where I can hold X, throw it to that receiver and say right there. I mean I have. Nothing but space. So you could run this play all game. This could be a bread and butter play right here. Next up, we got the 866 hook. So if you smart route the X route, you got a one play TD against against cover four. You just have to wait till he gets across the field. And he gets across the field a little bit quicker uh, than he typically would. You can see as he gets past that one safety, there's just nothing there. So that's a really good uh, cover play or cover four one play touchdown right there. So like I said, all you got to do is smart route them. You don't have to make any other adjustments. I mean, obviously, I'd like that running back to be blocking. And then just wait till he gets past that safety, and they're just flat-footed and getting burnt across the field. So really good play. We'll have the same effect against cover three if you put him on a smart route and then put the B on a, on a comeback route. Um, you know, that'll typically have the exact same effect. Uh, it's just going to be a tighter window, but you can see it gets passed. Um, so whether it's cover three or cover four, you have that option. If I really wanted to open that up, I could put Olsen on a streak and then move him across the field. Um, but ultimately, you know, that's just, to me, that's going to just pull the safety back a little bit, which will make the, the throwing lane a little bit better. As you can see, it's much bigger right there. I mean, the way that it, uh, that safety gets pulled down because of that route. So that'll make it even easier. But obviously, if you, if you make a lot of motions, 
Uh, but obviously, if you make a lot of motions, it's going to, you know, I don't, I don't want to say this will give away the plate necessarily because obviously this type of look um, can have that effect from a, from a run play. You know what I mean? Like you don't really have to um, have to worry about too much. And then I'm on, I'm on the run right there. But that, that whole play was messed up. I didn't even put the guy on a smart route. It still worked. So like I said, smart route more, motion Olsen across. And then put Samuel on a comeback, and this is going to be a monstrous broken cover three. You can see how that safety just drops down, uh, making him get burnt even worse. And then if I pass lead up the field a little bit better, I'll have a bigger window. So we're going to do that one more time. So I wish I could get him to the line. We we'll probably do that with the running back the same. Except, but he's just he just gets he just bites way too deep. That safety just bites way too deep, so it's it's game over. You can do it with the running back as well. He's already on a route. You know what I'm saying? Then in this scenario I'd probably block Olsen. I don't think I necessarily need that, but I can make Olsen on a drag, like a check down on a drag or any number of things. But you can see he doesn't pull coverage the same way that Olsen does. Next up, we got the PA boot slide. This play, <laughs> this play right here, I mean, you don't have to make any adjustments. It's pretty good just like this. Uh, the, the underneath route, I mean, the A route is probably going to be the most money route other than the comeback route. Um, and then the RB route's really going to be good under coverages, like a lot of cover threes and whatnot. Um, he's going to get open. Uh, but you know you really have uh, just about everything here is going to work except for the B route the B route is just going to uh, pull coverage for the most part um, and then like I said the comeback oof. The comeback's going to be your best option against man um, as you can see right here I mean, it looks like a man the comeback route like I said that's your bailout route pretty much every time whether it's man or zone um, and then your A route, I mean, your A route's going to be the most consistent, especially against, you know, user coverage, because there's so many different routes going on. Um, your opponent's going to, you know, they, they might just disregard that one. Um, I would say, you know, if you put B on an in route, it'll give him a little bit more purpose other than, um, you know, other than what he's doing. As you get a man coverage once again. So the RB route used to be a really glitchy play. There we go. We finally get him open. <laughs> like I said, he'll get forgotten a lot of times, uh, especially in like cover threes. Next up, we got the PA slide. No adjustments needed. You're just kind of reading front to back. So like if the RB route's there, you can take it for a good catch and run. You probably want to put a running back there. I mean, he's not very athletic. He probably could have got a little bit more. But you're going to read that. Uh, the A route's probably going to be the best route. The B route's not really an option. If you're going, the third option's going to be the comeback route. So you're reading front to back with the comeback route being the last option. Uh, but ultimately, the way that this, you know, that comes across the field, it's going to be a really good play. There, I waited too long to throw. you got to get that out quick or you're going to run out of bounds like I did there. But he was wide open. And I typically want to run it from the far hash mark as much as possible. Uh, but like I said, if you have a good athlete running this, you don't have to worry. Like, even there, he was somebody who was in the area. You could typically turn up with it. But I, I just didn't substitute anybody, so I'm kind of at the mercy of what I have. But like I said, I mean, that or the A route is going to be open. If they're not open, then the, the comeback route is going to be open. One of the three will be open every time. Your best man beater is definitely going to be the comeback route as well. You can jump right to that read if you have a man coverage. But you can see, I mean, one of those three always gets it. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. I'm just watching, I mean, if I have the outside edge, like right here I don't. There's a cover through safety there. I can probably still run it. But mostly I want to try to th hit that, that throw back. Um, as long as that linebacker comes in towards the run play, I can throw that ball. But if I have the outside edge, like right here I have the outside edge, this is a perfect opportunity to, to just hit the stretch play. Obviously stretch runs are always going to be good. So, you know, that's just the, that's your first read. Do I have that edge pre-snap? And then I'm watching the linebackers on the back side. There I didn't get good blocking, but they, I should have had a hole if that receiver held up. So like I said, we're here once again. Just Next up, I got the halfback stretch alert smoke. It's just a good stretch play. I don't really think the smoke's really that great, but you know these 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 RPOs really can confuse the defense to that they don't react to the run plays as quickly because there is the chance that it's it's not going to be a run play. So they kind of play it a little bit more hesitant. So I'd say you know I don't like the smoke play unless it's going to be um, 
you know, they're running a cover three or something like this could be a cover three and you could you could go back across but ultimately you know I, it's the only scenario where i think it's gonna be any good is cover three maybe cover four next up out of single back ace pair we have the pa misdirection shot it's a natural cover four one play touchdown uh, you just have to buy time. That's pretty much it. You want to be close to the line of scrimmage when you make the throw as well, uh, based off the fact that not a lot of quarterbacks can throw the ball 60 yards in the air necessarily on the, on the point on the money. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's watch the replay. All I'm doing, like I said, I'm buying time. This is for somebody sitting in cover four. I was too far out there. That's why I moved up. Like I said, getting close to the line of scrimmage because you got 10 yards in the end zone. This is this ball is going to be 60 yards in the air, and uh, all you're really doing is once he passes. And gets inside of the safety, your pass leading away from him and running to it and catching it. I mean, if I can get the further I can get it over, the better, because obviously the safety's already he's already blown the coverage, so uh, nothing he can do. Next up, we got the halfback toss crack. No adjustments to be made. You get a, a good seal on the edge here, though, um, and a lot of times, you know, a lot of times. I mean, I'll take what's there. I, I could have tried to swing it out for more, but I'll take five easy right there. Um, although ultimately, you know, you're, you're trying to get big plays here. You want to try to bounce it outside. Here we go. We get good blocking. Uh, can I get the speed? Oh, that's right, baby. That was a real tight look right there. Like I said, you can see, obviously, this has really big play potential. Go ahead and run it one more time. Um, but like I said, the blocking setting up pretty good. As, you know, as, I, I don't know if maybe I just didn't follow it really well there. But I saw some really, some really good potential there. Well, let's do this one more time. Like I said, that guy, he just chips on, and then they pass off really well. Uh, and then I'm just running for my life on that particular set. So, really good run play. Next up out of the single back bunch base, we got the Z spot. All I'm going to do is I'm going to put my B route on a streak. I can also put this guy, the, the square route on an in route or something like that. It doesn't really matter. But basically, I mean, if, it's, if this guy's open right away, I'm going to work my way back. If he's open right away, I'm going to take it for a catch and run. Put your fastest guy there possible. Um, I didn't necessarily do that, but I always recommend it. Um, and then, like I said, if he's not open, a lot of times the guy, you know, he, if he's covered down low, the guy above is going to be open. It's going to be that slant route or that outside post route. So that's pretty much your read. You're reading high and low. One of them is going to be open pretty much every time. Just take it. Don't ask no questions. You know what I'm saying? Don't force it to nothing that you don't need to be. Other than that, the B route sometimes can get open up the seam of cover two. Um, but this guy's a good cover two play outside. It's a little bit safer the inside. The inside cover twos don't really work as well this year because the safeties kind of converge in the middle. Next up, we got the PA end around. This play used to be really glitchy, and I, oh, this thing this is going to get blown up because I essentially have a, a all-out blitz coming. Uh, but you can see, I mean, the running back is really the play. I mean, it wasn't all-out blitz; it still worked out though. But the running back is typically the play for a good catch and run. Nice fake end around. Looks like they they unpatched it. I don't know if that's the way to <laughs> way to term it. Right here, obviously, the A route's going to be a better play because like they were sitting on that that you know that running back a little bit. But it's good to see that this play works again because they really broke this not too long ago. Let's go and let's do this one more time. I said that all those all those um, play fakes that might get you in trouble. But you can see the running back. They used to make it the running back just like he was covered. He was always covered. Now he's getting open again, which is really cool. Let's go ahead. Let's do this one more time. The B route there is open too, as you can see. He turns up the field, but you can't really see him. But it's an interesting wrinkle that they added. It wasn't really there in the past, where the B route was an option. So here we go. We got a blitz. Hopefully, I can get away from this. Canceled it out. And like I said, I'm taking off because the running, because the quarterbacks can run so fast now. That's their third option is to take off with the QB. Super cheesy throwback. So like I guess they're right here. We just take off, turn that, turn that running back upfield so he uh, takes the coverage away. So a really good play. But nine times out of ten, the running back's going to be the play uh, because he's just really, you know, it's really glitchy play right there. For the running back. So easy catch and run play for the running back. Moving on. Next up, we got the quick pitch. Uh, if you run just like this, I mean, in the past, I've motioned out that farthest receiver. Um, oh, well, you got lit up there, man. Like, you punched him in the jaw. But you can see it was a big run. Uh, but, yeah, I find it's good just to run just like this. I don't necessarily um, need to make any motions. I think it's actually pretty good how, as it is. Here we go. Here we go. 
So here we go. Like I said, we're getting that now. Oh man, just gotta hold that block down, man. Just gotta hold that block down. So I'm gonna try motioning out this receiver just to see, you know, what the difference is. And you can see right there. I guess I got a little bit better, a little bit better spacing by motioning out the receiver. So we'll do that one more time. Like I said, he backs off a little bit, which is part of the reason motioning out that receiver has always been so successful for me, is it, is it backs away the cornerback, and then we get a nice, big, easy run. So we got to do that one more time. Motion him out. And then, like I said, it just helps me to get to the edge. It's not always a huge play, but you can see I got much more than I did before. So motioning him out. Like I said, cornerback drops off. And it's gonna make it easier for me, and I would have been gone, man. It's one dude to beat, that Deion Jones, man. Speedy middle linebacker, son of a bitch. It's like right here, he dropped down, so I know I'm probably gonna have to cut this short. Actually, I don't. Yeah, no, he uh, he must have dropped off or got blocked out of the way or something. But you can see, it's a much easier run play with um, with the motion, which matches a lot of pump, uh, a lot of pass plays that I put out anyway. <laughs> So you shouldn't have an issue there. Like I said, he just got, man, he just came. That dude, that safety, typically those safeties blow that up. That dude was coming down to blow that up, and it didn't work out for him. He got blocked twice. So one more time. Just to show some consistency here. With the new setup. Oh, man, come on, bro. That dude, he's just, he's just playing lights out. He's really disrupting some things. <laughs> I'm motioning over the wrong guy, but it don't really matter. I'm willing to bet. Let's just see. The same idea. Like I said, it didn't matter. Still got a big run play out of it. Still close to 10 yards. Next about the single back deuce close. We got the PAX post cross. It's just going to be a cover for one play touchdown. You just have to motion this guy out. That's pretty much it. You don't really have to do anything else. Um, and you pretty much have a play right here. You just have to buy time. Uh, and then once he gets inside of that free safety, he's going to be gone. You know what I mean? Just pass lead and pull it across. Pull it away. And that's pretty much it. If you want to, you can always drag the A route or something like that. Um, you know, that's always, at, that's always at your discretion for another check down. The running back's going to be a pretty good check down. But it's really about when you throw the ball. So, moving on. Next up, we got the bench. This play right here, I mean, I went over this in previous formations. These these outside routes, I mean, that was a bad throw. He didn't catch it, but you can see he was open. Whether it's cover two, cover three, even cover four, these routes tend to get there. And then you also have your, your, your you know, your little out routes here, which get open. I mean, this is just a really, really good play this year. Uh, one of my more favorite, I would say. Uh, I'll definitely be running it. I probably should have threw the man. I, that was, I threw the double coverage right there. That wasn't the best move. So I'm going to go ahead and do this a couple times. Like I said, that uh, they chip off the deeper route. I'll take the underneath catch and run all game. Here go, here go. So one more time. And there we go. Like I said, that's, I mean, I'll take that underneath route. It's it's there. Next up out of the single back deuce close, we got the counter weak. These counter plays, they're all productive, except for when you got a, a blitz like that coming into it. But I still got outside of it. Because <laughs> like I said, the blocking's pretty sticky. But you're really, once again, you're just reading this outside guy. If he hesitates, you're taking it outside. You know what I'm saying? If he, if he crashes outside and takes himself out of the play, you're going inside. Uh, but you really can't lose. Like right there, hesitated. So I'm going to sprint outside, although this guy's right at my butt. Right behind me. But I still got 10 yards without even trying. Maybe more. I'm not sure. I fell forward. Um, so these, these counter plays are all pretty good. Right there, boom. He's waiting. Dude's waiting to get blocked. He's going to go right down the field. Look at that. Really easy play. Really good run formation. You're going to see a lot of good run plays in this. And then that right there, he goes inside. So I had, He went outside, so I had to go inside, but there was a guy waiting. It's not always going to be the way. So he's waiting again, waiting to get blocked. And I'm just going to juke that dude out of his shoes. I'm not going to get tackled by the first guy. Next up, we get the halfback stretch. Another really good run formation, or run play from this formation. I mean, there's just... You know, really, really wide blocking as I make two guys miss. <laughs> two guys miss with a nasty juke from uh, Christian McCaffrey. This guy is amazing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just hit this once or twice more. Like I said, I'll just take him out stretching as far as... I mean, it's just, you know, this is just a really top-notch run formation, to be honest. 
So here we got the cover through safety on the one side. I'm obviously going to want to go to the other side. Set these guys up. You know, it's just a really consistent run. Next up, we got the halfback Wham. I'm not a huge fan of Wham plays, but, um, you know, I mean, it's a, it's a good enough play. I'm just not really a Wham person. It's not really the play I like to run. But I always point it out because there's a lot of people that swear by this play. Um, you know, and there's, I'm sure there's different. I mean, it's like, it's almost like a trap play. I, I personally am not a huge trap play person either. I don't really think that's the way this year either. But like I said, I'm always going to call this play out just in case there are people that like to run this. But it is a good run play. You can see I get a good couple yards inside. Um, you know, anytime you have, you know, traps and wham plays, they're, they're, they're pretty decent. Um, you know, but like right there. So I finally get my big run. But I'm always trying to bounce it outside anyway. <laughs> but still, you can see there's definitely times you're going to have holes. So let's do that again. I got a guy coming off the edge. We'll see if that messes things up. Like I said, sticky blocking inside, so I'm going to take it outside. Uh, find my own path. Definitely a huge cutback lane. So like I said, good play. Maybe it's just me on the sticks, though. I don't know, because that was definitely not where the play was designed to go. So guys coming down again one more time. And there, yeah, it's just, yeah, it's good. <laughs> definitely a good play. Like I said, you got to make your own path, but there's definitely some sticky blocking in there. Let's do that one more time. Like I said, there's the inside. And I'm going to make that dude miss and make him hesitate. And I'm gone. So the halfback wham, definitely a good play. I take back everything I said earlier in the video. N nasty run. I'm getting lots of big time runs inside. Next up, we get the tight end angle. First up, I like to block the running back. That's pretty much it. I don't think that running back really does anything. Uh, but you can see the B route there. I mean, I was going to say you could put, uh, you could do a bench swap on the one side or a bench switch on the one side. But you pretty much have that already with the uh, with the B route. You already have a high low with the B route and the X route. So I'd say just keep it as is, and it's a, it's a really good play. As you can see, I get a big play down the sideline there. That's going to be big against cover two, cover three, uh, the X route, the, uh, the 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 Y route can be really good up the seam. There's a cover one. I didn't throw it quick enough though, so I didn't get a good animation. He still caught it, but I should have thrown it in the break. Just didn't recognize it fast enough. Um, so here we go. We got a cover three. Like I said, I can probably get this where I have the seam there. But um, you know that triangle route used to be a really good seam throw. The Y route used to be a good seam throw of cover threes, but now. It just basically pulls coverage in. They can hit the outside guy, which is just as good. So here we go. You know, like I said, this guy's money all all game. This tight formation's money. Um, that it's mostly just the X route, you know, for the most part. So that's pretty much the play. <laughs> Next up, we got the fade smash. So if it's a cover two, you can run it as is. I'm gonna put the B route on a drag just in case it's man. Because I don't necessarily have a lot of man beaters. Uh, but like I said, if it is a cover two, which you can tell, um, it's just going to get outside of the cover two. Any other zone, you're going to have to streak um, the outside route so that he can get outside of it. But if it's like a man coverage, like right here, I mean, he's getting, you know, that was actually his zone, but he, he ran and he trailed it. That might have been part of the new patch, but uh, it's still, you know, like I said, right here, like we have, uh, he's just getting outside of that. You know what I mean? I don't know what that is, but. So here we go. Like I said, any other any other zone, you're gonna have to go that route. This is a man coverage. You guys are pretty good man beaters with the Olsen and with the uh, the drag or the in route, whatever you decide there. I actually think blocking the running back makes sense uh, too, because I haven't been doing that. But here we go. So we have another. Oof. Blocking the running back is a good look. I don't find he really does anything more than get in the way. So here we go one more time. Looks like we got another man coverage or what? Maybe it was his own. I'm not entirely sure. But uh, you have good options over the middle. So here we go one more time. So this is probably a cover too. So I don't think I should have streaked that. I shouldn't have streaked that route, but it didn't matter. So make sure, since that's the money route, make sure you have a, a fast receiver there. Yeah, he actually it was a cover too, but since he got jammed coming off, that's why it still works. So here we go. This is probably a cover... Not really sure, but like I said, he gets outside of it. So just get that streak going, and he'll get outside of just about any zone coverage. Next up, we got the stretch alert bubble. 
you're kind of just watching what the defender in front of the uh, the Y route's doing. Uh, here's a cover three, so I would say it's definitely going to be best to get it across to him. I don't have a fast guy there, uh, but you definitely want to have a speedster at that spot. So like I said, cover three and off coverage like that, you're going to want to do that. Um, this is a good run play, though. You know what I mean? Like like some of these uh, RPOs don't have a good run play, but the stretch is a really good run play. So if I read that I have an outside you know, shot like right there, I, had an, I have an outside blocker, I can go this route real quick. You know what I'm saying? And it's obviously a really big play. If I don't have outside, like I said, a cover three, then I want to go to the uh, the bubble. But like I said, I'm getting a lot of a lot of looks where I have an outside, an outside guy. I didn't really accelerate too fast there, but I still had a good play. If I don't have the edge, I'm just going to watch that bubble. Like right there, I didn't have the edge. The run, the, the, the even the uh, the safety on the other side committed, and I'm going to hit that bubble screen. Real simple play. Next up, we got the four verticals. This play here, I mean, all I'm going to do is motion this guy out. Uh, if it's a cover two, like this looks like it's a cover two, um, I'm going to drag this uh, the receiver under, and it should give me a throwing window. Uh, good job holding on to it there, but it's going to be a tight window. Still going to be worthwhile. Here we go. Looks like we have a cover one man. Um, a lot of times the RV route will beat that up the side as well. Although maybe it's not a cover one man. It looks like it might be another cover, cover two. Um, as you can see, uh, that drag once again gets that coverage of how I want it. Cover three here most likely. Um, same setup. Only this time I'm going to just throw it a little bit prior. It's like I'm not going to wait until it gets down the field. I'm just going to throw it to him short. Like I said, this verticals play, uh, it's pretty easy. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again. Like I said, this the way you drop back, I can tell I'm probably going to be able to throw the ball in front of him. Sure enough, I'm right, but it was a horrible accuracy throw. You have to worry about that. Sometimes when you throw it too quickly, that happens. Let's go ahead and let's do that again. It looks like we have a cover one man this time, if I had to guess. And sure enough, we do. I'm going to go ahead and wait until he turns up the field. Like I said, you're not necessarily going to always win that because he's on a cornerback. But, you know, if you have a fast tight end, you can take that shot. Next up, we got the PA post shot. So I'm just gonna put the RB route on a uh, on a drag, and um, you know I'll have a good high low uh, with the two tight ends crossing. Um, so that's gonna be my biggest play. This is a one play TD against cover four drop show two. If I put the B route, I can either put him on a drag or put him on an in route and smart route him. I just want to get him lower um, so he doesn't pull coverage back. Into this uh, into this receiver, which is essentially the play. Um, so if I do that, he's going to make a, this going to make that play a one play touchdown as well. Next up, we got the P A Y cross. All I'm going to do is drag the R B route. That's it. Give me a good high low coming over the center. And um, if it's a, I mean if it's a cover zero like that was, I mean the Y route's obviously going to be pretty good. That was a man coverage, so that's pretty much going to be your man play. So block the running back, put the B on a drag, and uh, you got your man in your zones. So right here, that looks like a man. So these are all beat man, which isn't typical. You know, what I mean these crossing routes don't typically do that. But um, you know, at least not this year anyway. I mean, but they're being covered by tight ends too, so. That's part of the part of the reason why Olsen's getting open. I mean, against a corner he would not, but against certain uh, linebackers he will. And like I said, if you get a man coverage, you can just hold it. Like I said, right here, it looks like it's going to be a man coverage. This play is especially broken against plays like cover four quarters. That's really the look that I'm getting when this B route is essentially just home running the hell out of it. So if somebody's running that, uh, or you know any type of like cover four quarters, this is gonna do that. Next up we got the stretch alert bubble. If it's a man coverage, uh, and I'll know that by the cornerback on the right side. If there's no cornerback there, I'll know it's a man. I'm gonna run it. If it's a zone coverage, the bubble's gonna be a really good play. So here we go. Like I said, we got that zone. I hit that zone bubble. If there's no, if there's a cornerback on the other side, I'm gonna hit that. Oof. Said no cornerback over there, so I'm gonna hit that stretch. You know what I'm saying? Real simple, real simple read. And I'm uh, like I said, no, right there. Like I said, they're re they're reacting, they're following the run. I'm gonna hit that bubble screen. 
Get a nice easy catch and run. Cornerback on the right, so I'm gonna hit that bubble screen. So he's reacting late. So there's a cornerback there, so I'm gonna hit that bubble screen. Got my block set up. You know what I'm saying? Like that's just super easy, super easy reads to make that to make that idea, to make that um, you know, figure that out. So here we go, we got cornerback's back, so if I want to I could run that. You know, I could have easily did the bubble screen as well. So here we go, one more time. Except so we got that bubble screen. Real easy reads. Next up we got the curl flat seam. I'm just going to drag the RB route. And that's essentially going to help me get uh, uh, Thomas open against like cover twos and whatnot. Um, the A route is going to be a good seam play. But you can see right here, I mean that drag is just going to help him get open against a lot of different coverages. Um, you can always uh, block the running back if you want to. I mean, he's not. I mean, he, obviously, he's he's a good play. He's a quick read play, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. Uh, but you can see how this guy's just got a big opening uh, where he's going. And then the receiver, I think putting him on a true comeback route would be a better option because you don't really have a great man play on here. So obviously, right here, it's a man cover. Just going to be the comeback route more than uh, more than anything. So here we go one more time. Looks like we've got a blitz. I said that that um, that RB route there just pulled down pretty much any zone coverage to get this guy open. So really good play. I haven't had a chance to hit the A route yet. I don't know if that's gonna come. So like I said right there, it's a cover two. Gets between the uh, you know if he gets if the if the user doesn't use him off the line, a lot of times he'll be a good look. Right here, we got that X route. So that X route's a good man beater. A lot of times, will be covered against an inferior safety or, or a defensive, you know, linebacker. But there, I think it was a corner, and he still got it. So right here, we're just splitting right up the middle there for Olsen. Gets lit up, but he still hangs on to it. So that's a good play. Next up, out of the wing tight Z, we got the halfback stretch. You can always flip it. Like right here, I got that cover three safety in the box. So I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna try to take it the other way. I mean, I don't have a blocker out there, but um, you want to run away from a, you know, a, a, an extra safety in the box typically. Um, but the best blocking, obviously, is going to be to the two tight end, one wide receiver side. Sometimes though, if you run to the short side, the blocking will get off and get downfield to help you out. Uh, but sometimes they won't. But still, I mean, if you're getting one on ones, you know, you have a pretty good chance of, of making that receiver, that defender miss. Um, so it isn't a good option. You don't want to just you know, forget about that option. So, but overall, you know, it's a consistent play. All stretch plays are pretty consistent. Next up, we got the halfback toss. This play here, you're getting a lot of blocking pulling to the outside. So you really just have to get a little bit of, um, you know, a little bit from that, and you're pretty much gone. I mean, I'm making a few guys miss. Because Mr. McCaffrey is such a monster. But you can see I was about 10 yards down the field for that. I had to do that. The motioning in this receiver, if it's a man coverage, motion him across. But if it's not, just motion him in so that the, the, the cornerback has to, has to come in and follow. And then you can see it's just a little bit extra to the edge. They motion him in. If, like, if, like I said, if it's a man, let him go all the way. What you? Now I have no issue with that cornerback. And I just got to make like one dude miss. And hopefully I'm fast enough. Yes. So you, you can see. I mean, this is just really big play. And I couldn't quite go all the way, though. Two yards short. But you can make a mistake as you're as you're bringing him in, you know, like right there. I'd just I'd rather hit that 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 receiver lock out a little bit as McCaffrey's just going off right now, just getting through coverages. I mean, he's he's a monster. Next up, out of the iForm H Pro, we have the PA misdirection shot. This play is going to work best against cover fours. Let's go ahead and let's pick that. We'll find it. This is a big play. I had to move the ball back. Uh, only adjustment I'm gonna make is I'm gonna put Olsen on a uh, on a streak because I want to basically uh, pull pull that safety back a little bit. But you can see how Samuel here, his job is to get past all cover four co or the cover for four four safety that's typically supposed to cross. This is really just a play for cover four. There's no real, real, real check, check down. This is for those cover four bums. We know they're all out there, and I want to get as close to the line of scrimmage as possible because not everybody has bazooka. The streak isn't 100% necessary either. You can put him on a drag so that you have a check down because I know you don't really have one. As you can see, he's gonna beat that coverage anyway. I'm getting bad throws because Cam Newton doesn't have the best arm, but you can see he beats the coverage. Okay. 
So you got your stretch play. If you want to throw it, you just got to hold the uh, the X button or, you know, whatever icon on this, this particular play. I think that's the only option. This is going to be best against zones. I don't think you want to throw the ball against man coverages. Uh, but you can see it can be a really successful play. Ready. So, like I said, they're reacting strong to the run. Hit him with that. It's a really successful play. It's a really good wrinkle that EA put in the game this year. So here we go. They're not reacting. I'll go ahead and I'll run it. I said, I'm really reading the reaction of the defenders. Are they, are they re reacting? Are they crashing down? Or are they not crashing down? Next up, we got the stretch. You can run the alert, and you'll have a little bit more options. But if you just want to run the straight stretch play, um, to me, the alert is a little bit more effective because of the, uh, the wrinkle that you throw into it, the, the fact that you have other options. Uh, but the stretch play is still really good. You can see right here, I man, I'm busting a big run. I don't know if I'm going to get all the way, but, you know, it's whatever. Like I said, you can see it's the stretch plays are still really good plays. Next up, we got the FL Drive. Ready. This play here, um, you're just going to, you know, Ready. essentially this B route is going to come open and make this X, this, uh, X route here. Um, a really good play. Uh, that was a man coverage. I mean, he's going to just destroy man coverage, apparently. As you see, he's beating a cornerback for a huge play. But this is really about, against zones, the B route's going to pull down um, in a lot of scenarios. I can tell you that. I mean, that, that's just a dirty route. And this 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 tight end feels like a receiver with how fast he's running these routes uh, and how badly he's beating these corners. But the B route is definitely uh, more than just, you know, he's, more, he's a check down. But ultimately, it's it's really this route here. This route here is just going to be so money. Cover two, cover three, he's going to get open. Man coverage. And if he's not open, the, the, the B route coming across underneath should be open. So it's really it's really a two route play. But this one here, for whatever reason, is just it's just so dirty. It's just it's just beaten up so bad outside. And the rest of these routes, I mean, I don't, I don't even really. I mean, you got to check down in uh, in A, I guess, over the middle. But I don't even really need to look at, like, the fullback's not really going to do much. It's really going to be B, or it's going to be X. So might, might as well take the extra pass blocking. Uh, as you can see, I mean, I'm just getting a huge catch and run every time against with a mediocre tight end at that. Next up, we have the halfback stretch. This play here, you can run this a couple different ways. I find it's best to motion in this receiver because a lot of times it'll bring the cornerback in as well. And that's typically what you want since you're trying to get to the outside. Also finds best since the cornerback on the other side is already in to just motion, just flip the play and run to that side. As you can see, he's closer to the line of scrimmage, making it easier to get to the outside. You have less blocking, but you got a better position. Like I said, you can see here, I mean, it's just, you know, I just have to lead those. I just have to aim my blockers at that cornerback and that, and that linebacker, and I'm essentially just going to be able to sprint past pretty much every time. If I make one guy miss or that block holds up long enough, I can make it pretty much to the house. Next out of the I-form H tight, we have the PA misdirection shot. This is a cover four play. There's no adjustments needed. All you have to do is buy time. Uh, you have plenty of blocking, and then you have to get a nice time throw across the formation. <coughs> Going to have to watch a replay because timing is really important when it comes to this to, to throwing this you really have to and i'd say it's best to come close to the line of scrimmage when it comes to the quarterback but you can see if i throw it right here before he's passed this guy okay let's go back to the quarterback i'm throwing it before he's passed him it looks like he's even but the bottom line is it's not really it's not really important whether he's close to this guy it's important if he's if he's close to this guy because this is the guy that can get in the way so when i throw it across away from him he has no time to catch up and then i can just run away from the receiver so that's the bottom line other than that like i said you have to be somewhat close to the line of scrimmage because not every quarterback in the game you can't drop back too far because not every quarterback in the game can throw the ball 50 60 yards in the air so keep that in mind next up out of the eye from h wing we have the flood shot this plays a pretty simple setup your a and your b tight ends are going to be your your zones and then if you have a man um, the X route's going to be best, although realistically it's not a great option. You can see right there, um, you know, it's, it's just not as consistent. But your your tight ends are pretty good. That's that's just you know that scenario. Yeah, and this is a man. Like I said, I have a you know a little bit of a speed advantage, so I can I can throw to the to the drag. But typically, um, you know, this play is really about the A route on a zone scenario. Um, that's going to be your best option, and your B route will be really good against zones as well. But if you get caught in a man, as I accidentally quick throw it, 
But if you get caught in the man, you're gonna you're gonna want to go to um, to the uh, the X route. That'll be your best bet. Um, depending on you know if you can throw it in that break, you'll have a pretty good a pretty good shot at uh, completing it. But uh, it's really once again these are all timing throws, especially when it comes to man. Next up, we got the halfback power. Oh, this play I think it's best if you flip it and you run it. Typically, you're gonna run it inside if your blocking sets up a little better. Didn't really set up great right there. But if you flip it and you watch that defensive end, I know I have a safety coming down this time. But if you flip it and you watch that defensive end, a lot of times that'll determine whether you're going to go inside or outside. And typically with the power, you want to go want to go inside. And once you get that, I mean, if you get 70 there to get his block, you can see how he springs you. That's pretty much how this play is going to set up. And it's pretty consistent every time. I mean, it, right there. Like I said, I had two guys. I had to take the inside guy. I only, if only 12 would have got would have moved on after he, if he cleaned out that first block, I probably would have been going. This is one of the better runs, uh, the most consistent runs in the game. And like I said, I mean, there's just so much space inside. It's one of the best inside runs. Let's go ahead and let's do this a couple more times. Like I said, the way that they're, I mean, they just clear out a hole. I didn't get a, a ton there, but it's just so easy. It's like they're paved with a path of gold. Like I said, I mean, there's just there's just so much space before I get to that second level, and I get to that second level so quickly. Let's go ahead, let's do this one more time. Like I said, 70, you know, he's sometimes he's kind of aimless. I wish he would get up the field a little bit quicker. Um, but other than that, I mean, he's, you know, he's, he's helping clear out that block, I guess. And then it's just speed to the edge. I mean, this is just, this to me is one of the most consistent runs in the game. Next up, we got the halfback stretch. I find it's best to run this to uh, to the short side, or you know you can also just motion out this tight end because you want space. You want to get to the sideline. If you motion him out, let him get set in this formation. A lot of times uh, that'll you know help spring it to the edge. Uh, but like I said, I find the most consistent way to run this is definitely short side. Flip it, go short side. Um, you know they'll probably be overcompensating because of all the size, uh, and then, you know you just have way more space, less people in your way, more options. So, you know, definitely without a doubt to me, um, the most consistent way to run this is short side. I'm going to show that in other plays as well, like the power O. But if you want to run a power, power side, you're going to set yourself up a little bit by motioning out this tight end. It's going to kind of give away the play. Um, but it's still obviously going to be effective uh, if you want to just mix it in. You could also do a fake motion and run it to the shallow side. You want to flip it to the shallow side. And run a fake motion make your opponent think it's going over there it's not going to have any effect in the direction of, of which you're running the play and it's still going to be a really good run next up we have the halfback toss this play is just like the stretch play you can run it shallow you can run it you know as is you can motion out the tight end i mean it's really up to you go ahead motion thomas out here so we just got to get some blocks and you know it's a pretty good play. I, I would definitely throw it in the uh, in the mix. Next up, we got the PA counter shot. Uh, this play can be running into a bunch of different things, but it'll also be a really good cover four beater. No real adjustments needed for the cover four. Um, you have two really good under routes, but uh, like I said, you can get this play. I mean, I might have overthrown it a little bit, but you can get this play to get past the cover four safety pretty easily. Um, and then, like I said, your underneath routes are are really good too. Your A route and your B route. As you can see right there, they'll typically play the under route, and then the, and the over top route will be will be your better better selection. Like I said, this will be best against cover four. You really just have to wait until they get past the safety, or just you know, kind of as they're running past the safety, I should say. As you can see, that's uh, pretty much the look. Uh, but you don't want to throw this. Um, you know, you don't want to wait for them to get past the safety that you're really that you're really waiting for this for this corner to get past is not the safety that's closest to him, it's the safety that's in front of him. Because he's the one that can stop it. So once you throw away from that, you know, it's pretty much just running away from the uh <laughs> running away from the, the safety that's trailing anyway. Next up we got the PA power O. This is gonna be best against cover two and man. Ready. So whether it's a man coverage or a cover Ready. two, all I want to do is streak the B route. And it's just going to create a huge throwing window for the A route. I mean, that's essentially all you're really doing. You just you got your low, which is your fullback. I typically want to uh, to motion him to the sideline a little bit uh, for a couple reasons. One, I mean, he'll draw all the attention of the cornerback a little bit more, and two, he'll just create a bigger throwing lane, which is essentially my goal when it comes to Olsen anyway. 
Also, also is, uh, is, I mean, not him as a player, but the route, for whatever reason, is just destroying man coverages uh, for the most part. As far as um, the RB route as well, I mean, that's really going to be le best left to cover threes if they don't cover the flats, and you're going to want to put a better running back at that position. Next up, we got the PA spot. This plays best against cover two man and cover two zone. All you're going to do is you're going to put the B route on a streak, motion out the running back, and that's your setup. You're typically trying to create a throw in lane for Olsen, but a lot of times, especially in cover three, the running back will be left open underneath as my man fumbles there. Just a really consistent play against man as well as zone. Like I said, if they leave this guy open underneath, this is the play. So it really depends on what that cover two cornerback does. Next up out of the pistol ace, we got the FL Cross. Ready. Set, ready. So all I'm going to do right here is put this, uh, put more on an in route and then smart route them. And then bring them to the line. Give that, give that a little hike. And this is essentially going to make this a one play touchdown against cover four. As you can see, it's a little bit tight. I mean, that wasn't necessarily the way that I wanted to do it. But like I said, I mean, that in route, that's the most important part. Blocking the running back is the most important part. Give me that extra protection because I will need the time. And that's pretty much it. I mean, the rest is all, you know, hopefully I got the space. Oh, man. So in route to X route, put them on a smart route. That's it. Block the running back. That's it. Everything else you can do as is. You don't really got to change nothing. So if you want to hit this, hit this, you know, this Y route, you can hit that Y route. That'll be there. So if you don't have the time for that home run, there is another really good option. I mean, you could drag the A route too. I probably should have did that. But realistically, I mean, I just want to do, this is this is like the best one. <laughs> Without a doubt. Why not score if you can score, right? So that's definitely the best version of it. But cover four, I mean, this play beats it in two different ways. So to me, that's probably the best. And like I said, if I wanted to drag the uh, the A route too, that'd probably be the best play. Because that'll, that'll pull cover down even more for that, for that triangle route, for that Y route as well. So, you know, that's that's definitely the setup. So, in route, drag, block the running back, boom, you got a cover four home run, and then you got a lot of other good, really good routes as well. Next up, we got the stretch. Nice even formation. I mean, you can run this. You know, the good thing about these type of even formations is you can run this ball to either side, and your opponent's never really going to have a clue. I mean, there's no dominant side. So, there's like if you have two Titans on one side and no Titans on the other side, typically your opponent knows where you're going to run the ball. But in an in a, in a even formation like this, you could run it either way. You could look for holes in your opponent's defense. Like right there, I actually made a mistake. Like here, I got the cover through safety on the one side. So, why would I run it over there? Obviously, I'm going to run it to the other side. And then that guy broke through anyway, so it didn't even matter. But you can make those type of determinations. Um, you know, pre-snap, and there's no, you know, you can flip the play with your with your right stick, and there's no way that your opponent's going to know what's going on. So, like I said, right stick, you can run to the open side of the field, you can run it to uh, whatever side you feel like you have the best blocking advantage. It's not the best play ever, it's not like a home run play or nothing like that, it's like some of the plays that I put out. But you can dink and dunk this way uh, by running the ball pretty much the entire game, and then you, you have your inside runs as well, and your opponent's never really going to catch on to where you're going. Next up, we got the strong power. So, you know, just like the last play, I mean, I could flip this to either side, wherever I think I got my advantage. I got an even offensive line. They got an even defensive line, too, though. So it's like, a, it's not necessarily as, as obvious as it might normally be. Uh, but this type of play, because I have so many pulling linemen, uh, I, I think that it might be worthwhile to give to show your hand a little bit and motion over one of these tight ends. Because essentially, you're going to have, you know, you're going to have gaps because of all the pulling linemen. And you can see, like, I, I got 10 more yards because of that motion. And you can do the same thing in the stretch play. I didn't really mention that in the stretch play, but um, that's because that one to me is a little bit safer. Well, this one here, you're taking a little bit more risk. So I would say motioning over either a receiver or a tight end just to hold that point of attack um, would definitely be a better option. And you can see how I'm getting much better results. And like I said, I mean, you can even motion. You can motion block a receiver. If it's a man coverage like this, it's obviously a mistake um, to, to motion that, that extra defender into the play. But uh, if it is a man, you can motion that receiver across and then go the other way. You just have to make that decision before you go. So if your opponent's running a man, motion this guy across. And like I said, I mean, there it wasn't. He actually stopped and, 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 and tricked me out. But you can see how that would that would leave one side empty. So if you have a man coverage, that's probably the best way to go. I don't know if I'll get one here. 
because obviously, you know, they, we, we didn't get <laughs> we didn't get the man coverage there because you know that's I'm running this in random, but uh, you know you can see there's there's different ways to trick it. So here we go. We're just gonna run stock. Like I said, to me that's perfectly adequate. As you can see, I'm gonna get my biggest run yet running the play as is, no adjustments. But like I said, there's plenty of different ways you can trick it. Next up, we got the shakes. Let's play right here. I mean, you can run it just like this. Putting Cameron R's pain to the to the line here. Uh, sometimes I feel it can help him get off. Um, if it's a man, was that was a man cover. It didn't matter. He just had such a you know the angle of the throw. I guess was what made it happen. Like I said, you don't know, you don't have to motion them, but but it's a really good route. It'll get open against a lot of different coverages. It's kind of glitchy. You can see how it just gets outside, and it's just a really nice play. So motioning them out. Like I said, that'll give him the advantage. Like I said, you can see how that that dude just, just jumps inside and gives outside leverage pretty much every time. Really kind of a glitchy, you know. Like I said, once again, I should have put McCaffrey to this route. It'd be even worse. You know, like I said, right there. I mean, he, he gets the, he just gets bumped off by the receiver. Formations definitely, you know, the way that the routes are run, a lot of times will will be in your favor. And like I said, he's just opening the flats. That's pretty much all I'm looking for is that flat beater. It's a really good setup. So I would say just put, uh, you know, you do like a, like a drag, <laughs> just to give yourself another option. Especially against man coverage, because that's what this is. Although we got, you know, since it's a man cover one, obviously this guy is going to get all the way across the formation as well. So you know, that's that's a good scenario for, for that route at least. Next up, we got the triple option. Here, I mean, the, the one of the best plays would be just to hand it off right away, take this guy wide. I didn't put somebody in for the fullback. I should have. I probably could have got a much better run. I mean, you want to have somebody at this fullback spot a little bit better than what I have, but that's okay. Because like I said, I mean, the other play. It's the McCaffrey, and you can see how successful that is when you have a real running back running it. <laughs> so and that was a double safety blitz, so that's that's impressive to get that out. A lot of times you won't get that. But like I said, I mean, here you're just kind of running across the formation. Don't really have a running back, and I'm still getting 10 yards with a fullback. Who wouldn't take that? So, I mean, you don't really have, oh, fuck that, man. I'm holding the button. I'm holding it late. Who wouldn't take that? A 10-yard gain pretty much every time. Like I said, the blocking there is just... Pretty good. Like I said, if you're going left or right, it's pretty good. It doesn't really matter. These triple option plays are dirty. I've been a big fan of them for some time. Look at this. Like I said, I'm almost, I could. I definitely would have housed this if I had a running back here. Next up, we got the RPO read FL screen. Um, once again, I'm just going to count. You know, I have three receivers, two defenders in the box. So I'm gonna make this play. Um, it's good. I mean, it's it's a good setup. You can see if I, I get inside like I did right there, I can make a lot out of a little. It's probably gonna be best against cover three normally. So once again, counting. I have too many guys out there. Um, you know, and then the next part's the RPO. So one, two, three defenders out there. So we're gonna go. We're gonna hand it inside. There was no defensive end read on the outside really. But typically, I want to read this defensive end. Like, he crashes inside there. I'm supposed to keep it with the quarterback and run. And I got a couple yards, but that's dangerous. I don't like running with the quarterback too much. But obviously, you have that option. So, like I said, right here, he crashes inside. I, I just don't want to keep it with the quarterback. <laughs> I know that's not the right read to make. But typically, it's just, like I said, right there. I mean, I know I'm supposed to just take off with it. And it's a good play, but like I said, I don't really trust a lot of quarterbacks running with the ball. So, like I said, once I make that read... You know what I'm saying? Oh, see? Fumble. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So, let's do this again. Like I said, I want to get this. Like I said, I just want to get one block. <laughs> you know what I mean? If I, if, when the play does work out, it can be really big. As you can see right there, is the block set up better? Next up out of the Gun Bunch Open T, we have the fake screen verticals. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to take away that screen. I'm not a really big fan of that. Uh, he's going to pull coverage down for Hogan over the middle and Olsen outside. If it's a uh, man coverage, Olsen's going to be a really good option. Uh, but you can see, right, like I said, right there, that, that guy there is going to do all the work to pull coverage down for both both routes. And you're really just watching the user. If he covers the middle here with the A route, <laughs> if it's a man coverage, Olsen's going to be the best option. Um, I should have canceled that play action ahead of time, but you can see that like, he's going to be manned up. You'll know what it is based off of the formation, uh, which is going to be one of the better parts about this. <laughs> because of how far out they all are, you'll see three cornerbacks over there. 
Uh, and I guess I would block the running back too. I don't really want him run, uh, doing that play action. It just kind of gets in the way. But you're following the user. If the user drops down that drag, which they will do, uh, you can see how he's going to be open. He just got lit up and dropped it. But uh, those are your only reads. It's going to be the B route, which is your check down, Hogan, and uh, X. Pretty much just watching those guys over the middle. And you can see how dramatic the, uh, the, the drop down is uh, from that drag route. They drop down quick like that. Next up, we got the Ravens curl. But yeah, against off cover man, like man one, it's going to be a lot easier to get that space, as you can see right there. I mean, this is really going to be best against man cover one and man zero. Uh, but against man two, it plays really tight because they have the safety help. But out on an island like this, I mean, you can even throw it early uh, when they make that first break, and they'll usually cut in front of the cornerback like a like a like a slant. Like I said, I can make that read like right there. You know what I'm saying? I don't have to wait for him to even go outside. If I went that quick, I can hit that quickly like that. If you're calling a play like this, you're really just running it for, for one option, uh, which is going to be this outside route. And like I said, you're pretty much just watching the cornerback. If he's facing the if he's facing the QB, he's pretty much going to cut in on it every time. And if he's not, if he's waiting for that out route, like I said right there, you know what I'm saying? He's facing in, so he's waiting for that uh, he's waiting for that to happen. And then you can pretty much get big plays out of it pretty much every time. So watch the cornerback. Lab this. Like I said, if he's not facing in, like right there, he's facing in. Say so he's waiting to hesitate, waiting to jump on that route, and then I'm just, you know, hitting him outside for a big play. I'm getting 50 yards on this against cover one pretty easily. Same thing with man uh, zero, but against the press, it doesn't typically work the same way. Next up, we got the bench pivot. So this play right here, I mean, I don't really have to make any adjustments. I like the X route. That's going to be my first read. Uh, it's just a unique looking uh, read structure with um, with it's basically just a cover two concept, but you can tell it looks a little bit different. You can put the um, the RB route on a streak, and it'll help pull those coverages. But ultimately, I'm just going, you know, like I said, it's a cover two play. You know, what I mean, you got your you got Olsen, who's your, who's your deep cover two play, and then you got your out route, which is your cover three play. Next up, we got the verticals. Here I'm going to put X on a drag, motion out this receiver, and that's it. That's all i got to do. The B route will get open underneath coverages a lot of times, really quick and easy. Your drag is going to be the check down. It'll come open in this area after all the, after all the, um, the zones are vacated. Then you can see if you have a cover one man or cover zero, you're going to have a big play up the sideline to the, uh, the wheel route. That's going to be your best man beater as well as the uh, the drag. So here we go. I can tell I'm going to have RB. Like I said, there's too much there for, for you know, those two routes are too close together for the, the defender to choose. So whichever defender that the the, the, um, the user defender chooses, you pretty much hit the other one inside. One of those should be open pretty much every time. So like I said, right here, just waiting for him to clear. Then you have a real easy shot over the middle. Next up, we got the Z spot. I'm just going to put the B route on a streak, and then I'm reading A, which is open right away here. Um, if he's open, I'm going to take him. If he's not, the B route will be open over the top of him. Not the B route. I mean the RB route. But either way, like I said, if it's there, you know, like I said, there, he's not, so i got to hold it. That was a bad throw. It's typically going to be a little bit further outside, so I tried. I meant to say the RB route. We're just playing the A versus the RB route. So like I said, right here, it's a blitz. You know, we're just going to take what we can get. And if it's not him, he's going to be the RB route. The RB route will be better against man and cover two. Although that's a cover three, but just the way that it, it worked out, you know, with the spacing, it was it was perfect. So made that play. And then obviously the, uh, the check down or the... Uh... Next up, we got the halfback off tackle. Run it wide. Run it wide outside. This play might be best run outside as opposed to like your normal inside zone. You can see, I mean, I get a good, pretty good angle to get outside to the edge, and that's pretty much all you got to do. Let's just, just run this a few times. Like I said, I mean, there's, you know, scenarios we might have to turn it back up in sooner. 
but ultimately it's his best run to the outside. I don't find the in I don't find the inside zone is as good as this run. Um, just as long as the blocking sets up, you can see right there I'm getting chased by a guy that's gonna mess everything up. <laughs> but it's it's a pretty consistent play. You don't really have a ton of um, you know opportunity for loss. A lot of times you can just out sprint people to the sideline without worrying too much about taking losses. And then, like I said, the blocking sets up like this. You got a really good play outside. Next up, we got the inside switch. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna streak the um, the B route. Um, get some man like this. You see how like the the coverage really gets you know bunched up there. So that, that's how the running back got open. But he's typically gonna be better against cover two. I'm gonna cover uh, cover three. As you can see right there. I mean, he just gets. You know, some really good space to the outside. If you motion him over, this is really just to create space, though, for Olsen. If I, if I motion him out, um, it, it forces the uh, the outside corner to make a, a much quicker decision. The running back has his best opportunity getting open right where he is. You can see right here, it's a man coverage, but he's so far behind. So sometimes you can catch that and turn it upfield if you have a faster receiver. Um, but you'll definitely get the best results from cover three to the to the running back route. Um, you just gotta catch and run up the field, maybe make a dude miss, and uh, there you go, good play. The other side is a streak because I just want to. It's it's similar to the B route. You're gonna have catch and runs over there as well. But obviously, you know, you want to make a determination which side you're going to pre-snap. But you don't really want to um, to have to make that decision, be scanning the whole field if you don't have to. So try to make that decision pre-snap. Next up, we got the stick. All I'm going to do is block the running back, put the B on a streak, and that's it. I'm just going to read the B route's there. I'm not the B route. I'm at the Y on the streak. If the B route's there, just take it. Easy catch and run. Um, you can see right there, made a guy miss, and I make a really big play. That's really the only two reads. Is the, uh, like I said, pass block the running back. You, know, you can even block Olsen because he's not really doing anything. But I'm just reading B and uh, X. One of the two should be open pretty much every time. You can see right there, that must have been like some all out zone blitz. As you can see, they just kind of, you know, but I'm splitting the field in half. There's no real other read going on here. So, you know, pass block as much as you like. I mean, you could always put Olsen on an in route or something if you want to give yourself another route, but I don't find it's necessary. Like I said, these routes should get open every time. There we get a nice man route. He really just juked him out of his shoes for a big play. So that's going to be your. You know, your man, your man beater, your cover three beater is going to typically be the, um, there's another man, uh, typically going to be um, the underneath route, the flat, which also gets open under a lot of cover twos based off of what cover two it is. But um, you're just, like I said, just watching that route. If it's there, take it. I should have, I should have took it a little bit quicker. Good, good receiver for a catch and run, more. So, like I said, I can just line up and throw it too. I don't have to like do all the adjustments unless I need the pass blocking because it's a quick replay. As you can see, we make another dude miss, and we're going to the house again. I don't think we went to the house the previous time, but it was it was really close. So don't discount those short throws. Except we got the Z spot and go. All I'm gonna do is streak the B route. That's it. Now you got your high low A. If you see it right away, take it. Uh, you know, that'll be good against cover three, although I got lit up. Cover three, cover four. Your um, your RB route will be a, a man and a cover three beater, or cover two beater and cover three beater. Like right there, that was a cover three, but they, they must have been in hard flats. So it's really just, that's pretty much the play. It's just those two receivers. You split the field in half, the other side doesn't even matter. You can even block the running back if you want to. Next up out of the shotgun double stack, we have the RPO alert screen. I find it's best to run stuff like this just to spread the field. I mean, you can run like a regular RPO. I got one defender on the right side, so obviously it's going to be a good option to throw it to the B route, even though I didn't I hit the button. What the hell? Obviously, you know, it's to me it's best to run these type of plays to spread the field for the inside runs. Um, you know, I don't necessarily want to throw it to the screens unless unless I see an advantage. Uh, typically, if I have more receivers than defenders, it's the best way to go. Um, but ultimately, I think that it's just, you know, I just like spreading the field for the runs. Next up, we got the Shark Halfback Wheel. So it's going to motion out McCaffrey here. Got a lot of good cover one plays, a lot of good man plays. Um, the RB route, like I said, right there, that's a cover two. As you can see, he gets past the cornerback because of the drag. 
coming over and pulls the cornerback down. He'll also get open under cover three quite a bit and uh, past cover one. Like right there, that was an off coverage. So you're going to beat that underneath. If you want to pull that zone in better, you could always put the Samuel on a, on a slant just to kind of get that get that coverage in better. And then if you get like a cover one, like right here, I mean, I'm just had to throw it on the run, but you can see it gets past the defense. Didn't complete it, but it's okay. You can see that's going to get past cover one and cover zero. I don't think I necessarily have to complete it. This looks like another cover two, although it's a cornerback blitz. So either way, I mean, you can see he's either going to get outside or he's going to get deep one way or the other. So like I say, we got outside that cover three, cover two. I'm not really sure, but either way, you can't cover it that far out. You can see it just doesn't work. So that running back's pretty much open at every every opportunity. Next up, we got the 01 trap. So good inside run. I mean, you can see how the blocks just really hold up. Um, you know, a lot of outside runs in this formation. It's good to have one inside. That's uh, that can be successful. Obviously, I mean the guy came off the edge there. What are you gonna do about that? But ultimately, um, you know a lot of these inside runs like that's just yeah, that's just perfect. That's all I need is that hesitation. He didn't hold on to that block long, but that's all I need to get through. So you know definitely definitely one of the better inside runs. Next up, we got the inside zone. So just a, I mean, anytime you have like a three wide set, inside zones are typically pretty good and pretty consistent. Inside zones are one of the most consistent run plays in the game. Um, you know, typically, uh, if you can spread the defense out, it's it's usually the best way to run it, like a three wide set like this. Uh, you just really have to decide whether it's best to take it inside, or if there's a blocker hesitating, sometimes you got to take it outside. You know what I'm saying it, it, you take it inside if the blockers are engaged, outside if they're not. That's pretty much the best way that I could describe it. Like right there. Blocker wasn't engaged. I just saw it kind of late because he came off. He shedded it pretty quick. Next up, we got the jailbreak screen. This play right here seems like a little bit like an RPO. Uh, but, you, I mean, you have, like, the screen option, which to me is probably going to be the best play. But you also got a slant. So if your user darts off too quickly, um, you can hit him with uh, you can hit him with a slant. But realistically, I mean, this is this is the play. The, jail, the actual screen itself is going to be the most consistent. Uh, you just have to watch the user when you run it. Like I said, this is like an RPO to the user. And then if they run like those all-out mans that you see online, you obviously like a double safety blitz like that, you, you got an easy easy slant play right there. So like I said, I mean, this is to me, you know, the, the, the blocking holds up, which is somewhat inconsistent at times. The jailbreak screen can be one of the better better screen plays. Next up, we got the Y sale. This play right here is really all about the table route to the running back. Um, but if he's not there, I mean, the tight end over the top is going to be pretty good. You can also drag the Y route. Um, that's just another good another good option, especially if it's a man coverage. But you can see, like, the separation by dragging the Y route uh, is, is about as good as it's going to get. You're going to have, um, you know, three receivers. One of them is going to be open between the tight end, the, the running back, and the Y route. One of the three is going to be open pretty much every time. And you can see how they drop back to the tight end here. You just take the running back. So it's a really, really simple play. Simple read. Uh, just reading the inside receivers, you're not really reading the outside receivers. Uh, although the, the, that one outside receiver um, can do a pretty good job. I mean, that's that's you know they're, they're stretching the field mostly, but one of your checkdowns is going to be the square route. You could also, if it's man coverage, you don't really have a lot of man beaters, so you could put them on a comeback route just in case you get a man like you know you might like right there. I should have threw the, the A route. I just was trying. I was I was reading the comeback because I was putting my focus there. But without a doubt, I mean obviously. Against zone, the, the, the tight end um, is definitely going to be. It's going to be the tight end, the running back. Like, right here, this is my check down. The square route was coming across the field, but I'm talking too damn much. So since you don't really have a, a ton of man beaters, you can put the, you can make that comeback route your man beater. And then, um, you know, there, that, I guess that might have been a man coverage. I really wasn't paying attention. I'm talking too much. But let's do that one more time. So that's definitely... Uh, a zone, so we're gonna our man. So, like I said, that that square in's pretty good. You can also make him a comeback route. Next up, we got the QB draw. If your opponent's not respecting the run, they come out some too pass heavy. You know, hit them with the same motion, and then hit them with a with an with an inside QB draw. Make them make sure they respect that you still have the ability to run the football. Uh, just remember, your quarterbacks do fumble, so make sure to slide as well.
Uh, realistically, like I said, cover two, the, the adjustment is nothing. There's no adjustment. Just move, motioning out Samuel here is the adjustment. So for cover two, I got two choices. I can pretty much go over the middle um, with the uh, with Olsen and Moore, or I can throw it to McCaffrey past a certain point where I'm just going to have to pass lead inside with McCaffrey. I could also put triangle here on a drag, and then I could hit the circle route. Now for the circle route, I probably have to be, the ball would have to be over here a little bit, but let's go ahead and do that. So since I've identified cover two, you know, which is a, which is an easy read by the way, you can tell what a cover two is based off of how far apart the safeties are typically. Typically, the ratio of the safeties being that far apart means cover two, and the cornerbacks being down as far as they are typically means cover two. Sometimes with the cover four, they'll be back a little bit further, uh, but it's something that you just kind of get from experience. So, like I said, if I want to work that circle route, the triangle route, dragging him like this is really going to be the way um, as I get sacked. That's one issue that's going to be the thing with this horrible offensive line I have. I can't really say that. Um, that the Panthers, they have like one of the worst offensive lines of football. So let's try that one more time. Hopefully I'll, they'll keep Von Miller off of me. Uh, but like I said, pass leading that away from the uh, the safety because the way that that slanting receiver works, um, it's basically going to pull um, any uh, any middle linebacker and the direct. Actually, it's not it's not uh, it's it's the combination of Moore and Olsen. I shouldn't just give a credit to um, to that guy. But like I said, this slant here is going to get that guy's attention, and then you can basically you can split the middle a lot of times and take to the house. I mean, it's a realistic op opportunity. So now, if I'm doing against cover three. Uh, it's a completely different route. There's a couple different ways that this beats cover three, to be honest with you. Just like cover two. There's a couple different ways that it beats cover two. There's a couple different ways it beats cover three, and etc. Let's move on. So I'll try to do this quick, because I don't want this to be too long since I already went over. But against cover three, you'll beat it two different ways. Number one, Samuel will get open immediately. And I've showed that in previous breakdowns. And if you can make that guy miss, you can house it, because I've done that from time to time. So, you know, motioning out Samuel the same way, he'll get open immediately against cover three. And if you do this enough, your opponent will not run cover three the entire, the rest of the game. You know what I'm saying? If you if you beat him with this with this a couple times to steal that instant yard like that, he's going to stop running cover three. It's, it's happened to me a million times. So the other way to beat cover three is McCaffrey. The way this cornerback drops back, he doesn't really cover anybody. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he just kind of drops back. That's why zones suck this year. They don't make a choice. <laughs> they don't make a decision. You know what I mean? They'll basically just drop back and make sure they don't get beat long for the most part. But you really have your choice. You can take this instant yardage, like this guy here, or you can take that deep yardage. I don't know what happened there. Or you can take the deep yardage, uh, which is just holding the ball a little bit. Now, there's a better chance that your user, honestly, I don't want to say that. You should just read what your user's doing. If you're stealing circle over and over and over, eventually he's going to try to cheat down and take that. And that'll just leave this triangle route just wide open up the seam. And once again, if you have a fast running back, you can potentially break that for a much bigger gain than I'm getting. Now, if we run this play against, if somebody on your, your opponent's side runs cover four or cover six, which, you know, aren't the most popular, but if they do make that mistake, because I've run to people that still for some reason think cover four quarters is a good defense this year. So whether your opponent likes to run cover six or cover four, or you're playing solo battles, they run that quite a bit, the R1 route here is going to be a touchdown pretty much every time. You just have to buy time in the pocket. And then look how wide open that is. Like I said, people online typically don't run cover four. They kind of figured out that it, kind of, it really sucks this year, but there's still a lot of people that I run into that for whatever reason run that defense thinking that it's as good as it was last year, and I have no idea why. But if if you do catch somebody in this mistake, uh, just make a pay for it with this R1 route. Like I said, look how, look how wide open that is. Or just like I said, if you're running this in solo bouts, I run this quite a bit and it's pretty dominant there too. And then last but not least, if you have an opponent running man coverage, this is going to be pretty good against that too. So let's go ahead and let's pick uh, the more popular man coverage, which is cover one based off of my suggestion. <laughs> cover one hole is pretty popular this year, so let's pick that. Another scenario where this will basically break you know, your opponent from using this coverage, but uh, the circle route here is probably the easiest play to make. Um, the R1 route is really good too, as you can see right there. I mean, it's passed, but he doesn't quite have the speed to get past Roby, but it's all good. Realistically, uh, against most cornerbacks that aren't as fast as Roby, uh, Samuel will be gone. But the other option is the R1 route, once again. You just kind of have to pass lead him away, and I didn't do a great job there passing him away from the safety, but it's a hard pass lead, I'm not going to lie. Next up, we got the wide curl. All I'm going to do is I'm going to streak the RB route, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I got my, if it's a cover three, this guy will come open right inside like that. Right in the seam, right in the cover three seam. That's really my reads. You know, if it's cover three, that'll be the play. Um, you know, like I said, there's, there's he's just right up the middle there. You know what I mean? Like that's that's really this is once again a pretty good cover three play. Next up, we got the Z spot and go. So I'm just gonna put the B on a streak. I can put the A route on a smart route for better spacing, especially if I'm throwing underneath at a running back like that. I'll get better spacing that way. But ultimately, I'm splitting this field in half. I'm not really 
paying attention to anything other than these 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 two routes. Like I said, there I want the I want the deep route. I had it held it long enough, you know what I mean? Make a nice easy play. The running back was wide open though. So like I said, I'm splitting the field in half. Smart route, the A route. To me, that's a good call. Like I said, that, that streak is going to pull coverage back, and this guy's going to be open against most things. So, smart route again. Like I said, that looks like a cover four. I don't know. I probably should have just went with the underneath. Ah, I got it anyway. But like I said, I was trying to force it. Try Don't force it to the big play. If the underneath play is there, just take the take the RB route because it'll be a big play anyway because it's your running back. A lot of times he'll catch and run, turn the field a lot better than he did there. Next up out of the shotgun empty bunch, we have the Z spot. This play right here, you can run it just like this. I like to put B on a streak. Um, the RB route, if it's there, I'm going to take it for a catch and run. It's my running back anyway, so hopefully I got a really fast running back on my team at that point. But I'm really just working that back. You can put the A on a smart route if you want to make it a little bit deeper. I find that's good for spacing against zone coverages, especially like right there. You can see I get a much better, um, you know, much more, more space because of that. But if you leave it as is, I mean, if it's a man coverage, you can leave it as is. But you can see, it just takes a much more shallow route. And sometimes uh, the defenders can knock the guys around to the point where they're just kind of like, you know, really close to one another. And I don't want that. I want spacing. So let's go ahead and let's do that. Uh, like I said, I mean, there, that's a cover three. It wasn't such a horrible, horrible throw. He was open because of the because of the streak. The streak really, you know, that, that could have really made that happen. But... You know, so like I said, but ultimately, I mean, I like the A route. It's just, like I said, spacing. I want more spacing. So, you know, I'll take that a little deeper. And then on the other side, I, mean, I haven't really been paying attention, but if it's a zig, the zig route there is going to be really good against man, even though Hogan's not very agile. But you can see there's uh, there's definitely plays to be had there. And like I said, the A route. You know, if it's a man covers, the A route's pretty good before you smart route him. I wouldn't smart route him against man. But the outside routes will both be pretty good against man in, in uh, any man scenarios. So I said right there. I mean, that's... I don't care if it's cover three, cover two. Olsen's going to beat that. Maybe even cover four. Sometimes I'll get outside of cover fours as well. You can motion him out. If it's a cover four, you can motion this guy out, and it'll help even more. It'll, it'll attract that cover four outside guy. Um, you know, like I said right there. So, And that'll, that'll match a motion that I'm going to make in other plays. Next up, we got the bench swap. I'm just going to put the A route on a streak. If it's a zone coverage, I'm going to the right side. If it's a man coverage, I'm going to the left. That's pretty much it. You can see the running backs are really good play under coverages, under zones. If it's a man coverage, I'm going to switch to the other side. But neither one of these is really that great against man. As you can see, I mean, they're, they're, those routes typically beat man, but they just get chewed up on this particular play. So it's really just a zone coverage type of play as I'm getting a lot of man coverages to drive that point home. As you can see, they're just getting picked off. So, really, only zones work here. And, uh, like I said, the best route is definitely going to be the running back. That's somebody's running zone, so that's going to be your best bet. You can motion the receiver over, and a lot of times he'll get open even faster into the, into the flats, as you can see right there. I mean, make a guy miss, and I probably would have been gone. So, that might be the best option. And it should help pull coverage in zones as well for the B route. Like I said, he's just, you know, he's just cheating outside there. So that's definitely a little bit better uh, of, a, of a catch and run type of scenario. It's really all about the running back anyway, this particular play. Next up, we got the mesh. Play right here. I'm just going to motion uh, McCaffrey out to the sideline, put the B on a streak. And he'll get open against, you know, a lot of different coverages like cover you know, three and cover one, although I really didn't have that here. I'm going to motion out, though, just to shorten that throw. I don't necessarily have to, but I find that it works. So, it's like I said, it's motion him out there. Like I said, we're just waiting for certain coverages on his part uh, that we can get past. Like right there, that was probably a cover two he got behind. But ultimately, like I said, I'm looking for a cover three, which this doesn't look like it's going to be either. Uh, well, everything dropped back. That's kind of what I was hoping for. So, I did get something. It might have been a cover four. But you're going to see that from time to time. You're going to see everybody drop back like that. So right, once again, you know what I mean? Like, we're just going to do that, hit it upfield. And that's really going to be the cheapest part of this play. Like I said, he beats man cover one deep. But if you get a man two or something, you can't get that off, you got your drags. That's pretty much it. So here we go. I'm going to wait for, like I said, if it's a cover two, that guy will have to drop down on the Y route. 
um, but you know it's a tire throw so ultimately this is a cover one or a cover three play uh, with your check downs being a pretty good option I guess I'm streaking because I want to just you know I want to get that uh, separation there there's a cover two like I said if, if you turn it up the field too much you can get in trouble and get hit by a safety and drop the ball next up I got the halfback power I mean we got a lot of extra tight ends here a lot of times So this is a good um, outside run if if that's where the hole is. You can see right there. I uh, had to make a guy miss, but you know you can you can get inside or outside with this. But I, I would say I'm working inside first. I work inside out <laughs> because the angle of the handoff and the way that the blocking pulls, I can't say that I'm necessarily going to get outside too much. Next up, we got the PA tight end seam. All I'm going to do is drag the B route, put the running back on a pass block. And we're going to have high lows across the field as well as a good route, good comeback route for the uh, for man coverages right there. He'll probably be the easiest read nine times out of ten. I would say the, um, forgot the pass block. I would say the uh, the comeback route and the um, the check down drag are probably going to be the, the most consistent routes to just read off one another. Because the user will probably be on the, 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 the deeper route, the A route. But you can see right there, coverage pull back, so I just take the underneath route. It's a really easy play. So you're really just reading B off of the higher routes, the, the deeper routes. So there we got a man coverage, so I'll just take that check down. Although I don't know what happened with the animation, but you can see that's pretty much the idea. Next up out of the shotgun wing pair, we have the snag spacing. This, I'm gonna, typically, I like to put this uh, outside receiver on a slant and pass block the running back. But I'm really reading B in, like right there. I mean, that's an instant open route. If I motion him out, he'll, it'll get open even better for catch and runs. Um, but, you know, a lot of formations, it doesn't necessarily make sense to do that. Like if it's a cover two. Like here's a cover three. I could have just left him alone. But you can see, I mean, it's, it's something you can just steal quick and easy, uh, easy yards. So like five yards pretty much every time. On certain formations, you have a receiver there, and then it's even better. But like I said, I'm reading B in. Like I said, right there, that was a bad read. i got to wait to see what that defender does, and then move my way back inside. So let's do that one more time. Like I said, I don't have to um, I don't have to motion him out. But like I said, right here against cover three. I probably should have left him in. He would have got a more a better catch and run lane. But you can see, like I said, he's, he's outside of the guy that was supposed to cover him. So it does work out better sometimes. But you don't really have to do that. And like I said, then you're just reading reading back in. So then you're just kind of reading backwards, reading back in, like right there, boom, the RB route. You know what I mean? Like there's going to be an opening between one of those three receivers. You just have to go right to left. And then the slant's really good because it'll get open behind them all at the end of the day. So right here we got a man, so you know I'll just take the I'll just take it I'll just wait till it gets across the field nine times out of ten he's open against man especially. So moving on. Next up we got the dagger. Just put the A on a uh, streak, put the Y on a on a drag, and that's pretty much your play right there. Just wait for this B route to get open outside. You know he'll he can get some big catch and runs. I don't know, that was a bad throw though. Here we got double safety blitz. I don't really think this play has too much of a great man beater option. I would say if anything, put the um, put the uh, the X route on a comeback route so you have that option. So now he's now he's a good check down. Just put him on that comeback route. He's a, he's gonna like I said, if it's a man, you know he'll come back to that. That was actually bad timing by me, but it still worked out. Because ultimately, these crossing routes don't really beat man too well anymore. Except here we go. We got that, you know, just hit that comeback route. That wasn't, because of how close I am to the sideline, it's not even a really good comeback route. It's more like a, like a hangman route, which is not not that effective. <laughs> so, But ultimately, like I said, against zones, this is the play I'm going for anyway. Uh, which can be a good catch and run type of play. Next up, we got the fade smash. If it's a cover two, the uh, the Y route's still going to be very good. As you can see right here, I mean, it just gets outside the coverage. Um, but ultimately, I'd say it's pretty much just a cover two play at this point. So like I said, it's pretty much just a cover two play. Here it looks like we have, uh, I'll take the, come, the check down, the comeback route there. 
Next up, we got the level sail. This play doesn't work as good as it did last year, but it's still pretty much a read to the running back. It's running back tight end. Um, as you can see, I'm getting a big play, but it's definitely... Ooh, I think it's fumbled. It's definitely a really good play, though, down the field. Um, you got a, a series of check downs on the other side, and like I said, you're pretty much just going tight end, running back. Did I get back-to-back -back fumbles? What kind of bull crap is that? But uh, that's pretty much the play. And like I said, obviously all these check downs on the right side. One of these, one of these guys will be open. <laughs> one of these guys will be open pretty much every time on the other side. You don't really have a man beater that's too great, so you could always put one in a comeback route. Um, the furthest one out on a comeback route, so you have a, a reliable man beater. Uh, then just your tight end. Your tight end would probably be your best man beater at this point. Next up out of the shotgun tray, we got the PA post shot. This play right here, all I'm going to do is I'm going to put A on a streak, Y on a drag, and uh, I'm going to put the X route on an in route and then smart route. That's going to be my check down. Uh, but pretty much this play here, I'm just trying to create one play TDs against zone coverages. Um, but, I mean, it doesn't have to be a touchdown. Right there is just a big play. The X route being on the in route like that, is there to come open after the user leaves the center of the field. If he follows the, the in route, he'll be a good check down. Next up, we got the RPO alert bubble. This formation, if it's zone, the, uh, the screen is going to have uh, an advantage as far as blocking. If it's man coverage, you won't. So you typically want to run it against man. The formation gives that away. So like I said, right here it's man. So I'm pretty much just going to take the, the best run that I can get. It's a good inside zone run, so you'll have that. I find overall the run play works better against zone as well, though. So it's really like you don't really, you know, the, it, it gives away the formation, but it still works best against zone either way because you'll have a blocking advantage one way or the next. And then, like I said, I mean, here I don't have the blocking advantage. You know what I mean? I have three on three. So, like I said, best run against zone both ways. Like I said, you'll have, you'll know what it is based off of the, uh, based off of the formation. It'll give that away right away as well. So if you, if, you, if you have a man coverage, it might be best to switch out to a, to a pass play. Because like I said, the blocking advantage and everything is best against, uh, against you know, it's just best against zone either way. Next up we got the RPO alert trap. Trap plays are pretty good. Um, this one here is extra good because you got this option to flip it out here. I mean, a lot of people are going to be shooting in towards the run. And they typically want to flip it out to the pass. Like right here, I mean, I really don't have, you know, the way this blocking sets up is really nice too. But I really don't have uh, a ton of running space if I see the formation coming out looking like that. Stacked formations like this, you know what I mean? And if it's a zone coverage especially, I mean, you're going to see I have three three wide receivers, two of which are blocking against two defenders. So if it's a zone, it's going to be the read. And the formation will basically give it away. Like right here, you can tell this is a man. So I'm going to go ahead and hit him with the run, get the most I can get. It's a five, six yard run easy. Next up out of the gun tray wide flex, we have the RPO screen alert. RPO alert screen, I should say. So this formation will give away man or zone, which is going to basically determine what you do. If it's a man coverage, Olsen's really good. If it's a zone coverage, uh, the the obviously the uh, the screen's really good. You can also just kind of watch like what the uh, defenders do. Like if they if they hesitate, obviously you don't want to run into that because they're going to be coming down to that. You know, if they if the uh, if those those defenders in on the right side crash in towards the run play, you obviously don't want to go that way. But if they drop back, I mean, right, right there, they drop back a little bit, gives me a lane. So it's really really that's the determination, more than anything. Like I said, we got a blitz here. We'll go ahead and get that out. I probably could have got that inside a little bit better, but I almost ran into him. Like I said, but that's you know, I like these these screen plays are really good this year. So your first indicator is man or zone. Your second indicator is what are those guys on the left side doing? So right there, he crashed inside. That actually, I didn't get a block. I don't know what was going on there. So your first indicator is man or zone. Your second one is what are those guys doing outside? You know I mean, like, do they crash in or do they do they stay put? If they stay put, it's a, it works pretty good either way. But if they stay put, obviously, um, you you know you have a. Uh, it's a better option to go the other way. Need more help or just want to show your support? Then head over to my Patreon and join my team, where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays, as well as early access to my bids and more. Link in the description below.